Hello, this is the next video in a playlist that I'm calling Hypothesis Testing. And we're sort of in the unbiased hypothesis testing phase. And the previous videos we looked at uniformly most powerful, unbiased, two-sided, simple versus composite hypotheses. And this little video and little mini-series, we're looking at composite versus composite uniformly most powerful unbiased two-sided test. And we're in the Poisson setting in this video. <clears throat> now the theorem that we're using to, to, to conduct this test or derive the test is in this video here, unbiased hypothesis test, which is earlier in this playlist. And the theorem we stated but not proved, and later in the later video we'll prove that theorem. But we're going through several examples first. So here, let's just jump in. So let's let X be Poisson with lambda, sample size of N, we're going to conduct an alpha level test. And the test of interest is the null hypothesis is that the, the lambda parameters between two values, lambda 1 and lambda 2. And the alternative is that it's less than lambda 1 or greater than lambda 2. The density for a Poisson distribution Okay, technically, I should say probably mass function, but you can say the density of the discrete type, and, it, and it's the same thing. So the probably mass function for the Poisson distribution is this. You can sort of trick it into this form. It's, it's exactly the same. We take the e to the log, and we get this back. But this is in exponential form. Then if we call lambda, or the natural log of lambda tau, then this is definitely in the form of the theorem. And the sum of those x's is our test statistic. We're, we'll call it y. And we know that sum of independent Poissons is also a Poisson. So y is distributed with Poisson and parameter in lambda. Now note that uh, natural log of lambda is a one-to-one -one function of lambda. And you can even back solve for lambda in terms of tau. So lambda is equal e to the tau. And so they're one-to-one -one functions of each other. So test for tau or lambda are equivalent. And then the theorem says the UMPU test, so uniformly most powerful unbiased test, is given by this uh, test function, phi. Now test functions take on, the, take on values between 0 and 1. If it's 0, it means we absolutely do not reject. If it's a 1, we absolutely reject. And then if it's any value in between, we reject with that probability. So the test function is a 1 if y, our test statistic, is less than some c1 or greater than some c2. We reject with probability gamma 1 if y is equal to c1. Reject with probability gamma 2 if y is equal to c2. And we do not reject if y is between these two cutoff values. Now the the values c1, c2, gamma 1, gamma 2 are determined by these two equations. So alpha is equal to the expected value of the test function with the assumption that lambda 1 is the true parameter. And the second equation is that alpha is equal to the expected value of the test function under the assumption that the true lambda, the true Poisson parameter is lambda 2. Now let's start looking at these equations in more detail. Let's look at the first equation. So alpha is equal to the expected value. Now that phi is a, it's a discrete value, uh, takes on discrete values. So the expected value is the probability it can assume times the probability of assuming that value. So it's one times the probability of, of assuming this value, which is this piece and this piece then it's gamma 1 times that probability, and then gamma 2 times the probability that y is equal to 2. And that's it. So now, but let's subtract those these pieces over, and we get this, and then of course these come down. Now we're going to call, in the R illustration I, in the next video, we'll call this K1, this piece K2, and then this piece K3. And then the unknowns, gamma 1 and gamma 2. So what I do is I create a matrix of all reasonable C1 and C2s that could be cutoff values. And then for each row, we solve for gamma 1 and gamma 2. Now granted, we need this condition too, but it's on the back. I have to turn the page over, so I'll talk about it in a second. But then it's easy. You have two equations, two unknowns. It's easy to solve for, say, gamma 1 and then 
put that in the second equation, solve for gamma 2, and then, you know, it's, so it's easy to get solutions. And then you take the ones, the, the solution, where both gamma 1 and gamma 2 are between 0 and 1, and that's it. And, and there's a unique solution with probability 1. It's actually quite fascinating how it all works. So we'll use these note this notation in a next video an R program. So the second equation is it's the uh, alpha is equal to the expected value of the test function, assuming that lambda two is correct. And so this is one times the probability of being that we get a one gamma one times probability that we that we uh, see gamma one, which is y equal to c one gamma 2 times the probability of assuming a, a gamma 2. We take these two values, subtract it over. We'll call that K4. These come down. We'll call this piece K5 and K6. And then in the R program that we use, you know, it just takes a split second to derive and solve for gamma 1 and gamma 2. So cool. Now, I've been carrying this test out through the past three or four videos. I call it a leave out one tell. Now, I haven't seen this in books. I haven't seen it pretty much anywhere, except for in some programs when they calculate sample size, they'll leave out the tell that is really close to zero. So to calculate sample size, you need to assume a value in the alternative region. And then once you assume that's the true value, the probability of being in one of those tells is really, really small. So they just leave it out, and then calculating sample size is so much easier. And it's a pretty close approximation. So I call it the leave out one tell. And here, so we let alpha be the probability that we're in the left tell. So we assume alpha one, or lambda 1 is the true value, and we calculate this. And so this is easy. So you just start, you pick a value of C1, and then you keep increasing it until it just goes over alpha. And then you back it up one, and then that's your C1. Um, and then you can, since known, this is known, this is known, you can solve for gamma 1. And, and you just solve for C1. And the same way for this one. Let alpha equal, you know, this probability, which is sort of being in the right tail when you assume lambda 2 is the correct value. And then so you... You pick a large value for C2, you de keep decreasing it until the probability of being in that right tail is more than alpha, then you back up one, and then that is your C2, you know, that, that just went over the, the alpha level. And then you can back solve for gamma 2, and that's it. And actually, you don't even need a, a computer, just a simple four-function calculator and uh, the back of a book that has Poisson tables in it. It's so, so easy to calculate. And the power curve is so close to the UMPU test that um, I'm surprised this isn't used more. But I guess with computers, you don't really need this approach. So the example we're going to do in R is this. We're going to let N equal 25, the alpha level be 0.05, the null hypothesis is that lambda is between 2 and 2.5, H, the alternative is that lambda is less than 2 or it's greater than 2.5. And the uh, UMPU test, the C value is 39, C2 is 76, and these are the alpha cutoffs. Now, the leave out one tell, the C1 and C2 are the same, but the gamma 1 and gamma 2 are slightly different. And in this, uh, and that's it. So those are the two tests. But I also... Just for illustrative purposes, I pick a value that's bigger than this. I, I want to say four, five, or six. I don't. I forgot already. But then the leave out one tell test and the UMPU test are like accurate to like 10, 12 decimals. I mean, they're essentially the same test. So, all right. Well, that's all I have for this video. Hopefully, you enjoyed that. I sure did. Please like the video and subscribe so you don't miss the next one. Thanks. Bye.